Domestic first class in the US. Sure, I've been walking past it hundreds of times for years on my way back to economy. But I've never actually paid for it myself, and I've always wondered what it's like up front. I've had a chance to review United's A319 first class before on an award ticket, but on my whirlwind prior review of having status with American Airlines last time, I was actually upgraded to first class four times. So this review is going to cover one of those flights, from Chicago to DC on the 737-800 in first class on American, but I'm going to layer in some footage from other flights to discuss consistency and differences in service. Should you pay for first class on American? Let's find out. Merry Christmas! I'm actually here flying on Christmas Day. I thought I'd escape the crowds by flying on the holiday, but it seems a lot of other people had the same idea. Clearly not many of them had status though, as the first class cabin had 8 seats available a few days before check-in. I was upgraded 70 hours prior to the flight, which was the only time I've ever been upgraded before just before boarding. At the airport, there were still 4 empty seats and only 3 people on the upgrade list. The final seat went to a non-revving flight attendant. Today, everybody gets an upgrade. The cash upgrade offer was $97 in the app, which seemed to be the lowest Chicago DC went in my experience. Do you get anything special at the airport? Eh, not really. Priority check-in, which I didn't need as I checked in on my phone. Free check bags, but I wasn't checking a bag and had that through both the elite status and by having a credit card. Importantly, you do not get lounge access on domestic first class flights on American here in the US, except for certain premium transcontinental routes. Only Alaska gives you lounge access in first class and only on their longest routes these days. First class gets zone 1 boarding, which is just behind concierge key members. The 737-800 has 16 first class seats, making it far better than the A320 and A319 for snagging upgrades. Okay, let's talk about these seats. They have a reputation for not being great. For this flight just over an hour, eh, they were fine. But there really isn't that much padding in them at all. Unlike Air Canada's first class, there is no leg rest. An American flies these seats on some pretty long flights. Legroom is only 37 inches, with 21 inches, and the seat reclines about 5 inches or 20 degrees. That really isn't all that much. You get just as much legroom in the exit row seats. There's USB power in front of you, and full power hidden in the armrest. The main table has both a smaller and larger configuration, and includes a place for your phone or tablet, since after all, there's no in-seat entertainment on American Airlines. There's a cocktail table on the armrest, and a second mini table that folds down from the seats in front of you. As people boarded, we were asked about pre-departure drinks, and I ordered some tea. Pre-departure drinks were only offered on three of the four flights. Flying time to DC was an hour 30 at 37,000 feet. For a second beverage, I got a mimosa. That's something you can't get back in economy. And hey, given the quality of American sparkling wine offering, it really needed the orange juice. I tried drinking it straight on another flight, and trust me, you really don't want to. What about food? Before COVID, flights between Chicago and DC were considered to be premium shuttle routes with a full meal offering. In Canada and Europe, you'd get a meal no matter how short the flight is. But no, now it's considered too short for that. On flights between 500 and 900 miles, you get the snack basket. 
What's in the snack basket may change, but there's stuff like chips, cookies, or hell, even olives. My seatmate likely didn't appreciate it when I took those. I mean, sure, it's fine, but there's nothing about this premium snack basket that screams first class to me. What about on longer flights? Well, my two flights to Mexico were over 900 miles, so I got a full meal. First, you get a hot towel, drink service with some nuts. On the first flight, I got an Asian salad called the Edamame and Mandarin Orange Slaw. As a light meal, it was honestly pretty innocuous. There was also a cheese dip that was moderately addicting and a passable cheesecake. On the second flight, I got chicken parmesan. The pasta was kind of nasty, but the chicken itself was actually pretty good and I ate most of it. Cheese and olives were, well, cheese and olives. Other options on some flights include the golden chicken, vegetable grain bowl, and beef short rib. American is supposedly about to revamp their catering, so God knows what you'll get, but it was edible and passable if not explicitly good. In general, you can and should pre-order your meal, but I wasn't able to as these were all last minute upgrades. Then in no time at all, the quick flight to DC came to an end and we landed at National Airport. So American Domestic First Class, did I enjoy the upgrade? Yes. Did I have four great flights? Yes. Would I buy it outright or pay cash for an upgrade? Eh, no, I still don't think I would. Many bloggers say that they value upgrades at $50 an hour. On this flight to DC, they wanted $97. As the flight was only an hour and a half, that's a no. But even on the longer flights to Mexico over two hours, I still don't think I would have paid the $90 or $130 they wanted. If you're upgrading from straight economy? Yeah, sure, perhaps that's worth it. But that's not the choice I face. Because of my American Platinum or Platinum Pro status, I get main cabin extra seats for free already. I can select an exit row with as much legroom as first class. I still get basic alcohol back there dedicated overhead bin space. And I often find there isn't someone in the middle seat of the exit row. Honestly, I think there are times that the experience and main cabin extra in the exit row may be as good if not even better than first class on a short flight, especially if there's no meal or I already ate in the lounge. Then it really just comes down to seat width. Perhaps you need that extra seat width. In that case, then absolutely get first class, not just for your comfort, but for those around you. But for me, I think domestically, I'm good here in my now favorite 16 or 17A with tons of legroom and a pineapple truly. So that's Americans first class. If you want to see my magnum opus reviewing 16 American Airlines flights with elite status, you can click right here. But I mentioned several flights to Mexico, so join me next time to fly Aeromexico for the first time to see what that airline is like as well.